Okay, I love this restaurant. And if you're planning on investing in a genuine Disney dining experience, then you're going to want to go somewhere memorable like this. Now, is this storybook inspired restaurant going to check off those boxes for you? Or should you hi-ho, hightail it on over to a different place to eat? Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and today we're wandering through the forest of the most enchanting Disney character meal on property, storybook dining at Artist Point with Snow White. Yep, that's really the entire title of the restaurant. Much like getting lost in the woods, storybook dining does take you off the beaten path, so we're gonna find out together if dining here will lead to your happily ever after or kill the vacation vibe as quickly as a poison apple. So can we talk about that seriously long restaurant name for a sec? I mean, why is this called Storybook Dining at Artist Point with Snow White in the first place? Wouldn't Storybook Dining or Artist Point suffice? And actually, this restaurant was formerly just Artist Point with an offered signature dining at the Wilderness Lodge. But in 2018, the restaurant was reimagined to celebrate the OG Disney princess story, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. But just so everyone was aware, this is the same signature dining location as before. The Artist Point part of the title stuck around. Now, time to get lost in the woods, friends. Chill out, Kristoff. This is no time for a power ballad. What am I saying? It's always time for a power ballad. But in order to find storybook dining, you'll need to head over to Disney's Wilderness Lodge, which is one of the Magic Kingdom area hotels. There are a couple of different methods of transportation. From the entrance of Magic Kingdom, you can take a quick boat ride over. Or if you're coming from another park or the Disney Springs shopping district, you can hop on a bus. And of course, there's also the option of driving yourself or getting a ride share, which should work just fine as long as you have a reservation for storybook dining all locked and loaded on your Disney World count. You catch that? I dropped the reservation word again because Storybook Dining at Artist Point only serves one meal time per day. Reservations for this place book up in a snap, so you're going to want to make sure to snag those advanced dining reservations 60 days before your trip kicks off. Capiche? On the day your dining reservation window opens, you can make your reservation through the My Disney Experience app or through the Disney World website, but I would frankly get up and be on at 5.45 a.m. Eastern time to make sure you snag it. Once you're at the lodge, you'll find the restaurant inside the lobby, but if you've got some time to kill, stop and take a minute to really appreciate the all-around coziness that is Disney's Wilderness Lodge. The lobby's atmosphere here really lends itself to a themed restaurant in an enchanted forest, what with its massive rustic fireplaces, bubbling indoor spring, and towering totem poles. Now, I know the temptation to grab a chair in the lobby and just stay there is very real, but you can't miss that dining reservation. You got up at 545. But don't worry, the woodsy views continue once you're inside Artist Point. The restaurant has a craftsman style to it with lots of muted colors and rustic elements. One of the coolest features about the restaurant, though, is above and around you, the canopy of trees. Not real trees, fake trees. Disney sort of has a knack for those. I'm looking at you, tree of life. You're going to see tree branches covering the ceiling and twisting down around the walls to really emphasize the hole you're eating in an enchanted forest thing. Now look down at your table, you'll also find a tree-shaped dish stand because the restaurant commits to the bit here. What's the dish for? It's what you'll use to hold your shareable plates, which is a crucial part of the whole dining experience and you're gonna see why soon. And then there are the colored lights throughout the restaurant, AKA the cherry on top of the atmosphere. And throughout your meal, these lights will change color to bring a whole new mood to this enchanted setting. Now, Snow White is known to hang out around Epcot and the Germany Pavilion from time to time, and you might catch the Seven Dwarfs digging for gems if you take a ride on Seven Dwarfs Mine Train in Magic Kingdom. But at Storybook Dining, you can feed two birds with one scone. I'm not gonna hit him down with a stone. Snow White might think less of me. You can also meet the Evil Queen, which is frankly the best part of this whole thing. Now, during your meal, you're gonna get to chat with the Snow White along with a couple of her friends, Grumpy and Dopey. Yeah, you're gonna get two out of the seven. After all, those diamonds aren't gonna mine themselves, Somebody's got to stay at work. And if you or someone in your group is determined to meet as many different Disney characters as possible, like someone who's determined to expand their comic book or Magic the Gathering card collections, then this is a great chance to meet some rare characters. Typically, you're only going to find Grumpy and Dopey out and about during the Halloween and Christmas parties at Magic Kingdom. The Evil Queen also doesn't rear her wicked head around the Disney World property too terribly often. Usually, we see her during After Hours events and maybe a few other special occasions here and there. So if you've been hoping to run into Her Highness, but you don't want to pay to see her during an after hours Disney World event, this is a surefire way to accomplish your goal. Just be wary if she offers you a suspicious looking fruit. Unlike Snow White and Grumpy and Dopey, the queen won't come around table to table. I mean, she's a queen after all. She wouldn't stoop to do something so lowly. Instead, you'll have to visit her in her evil lair, aka a photo op area off to the side for a mischievous selfie. 
Okay, are we ready to talk food? All right, the enchanted Snow White theming does not stop at the restaurant's decor and characters. It also heavily influences the prefix menu. Now, something I wanna say quickly about this restaurant. Character meals usually don't have the best food. Not gonna lie about that. The major outlier for this, for me, is usually Garden Grill. As you know, I think they have great food there. But storybook dining is also an outlier. The food here is amazing. It is excellent, very well done. There's no buffet. This stuff's gonna come to your table. It is truly, truly delicious. So I would honestly come here even if I didn't care a hoot about the characters. And frankly, I'm an introvert and characters freak me out a little bit. So I still wanna come here even though the characters are kind of a negative for me. So that tells you a little bit something about the food. Okay, moving on. The prefix menu includes those shared appetizers we mentioned earlier. And there's also shared desserts for the table. And you also get to choose one entree for each person. But what will you find on the menu? mostly hearty American food designed to incorporate elements from Snow White. So it sort of brings the movie to your plate. This can be seen in that wild mushroom bisque appetizer, which I mentioned in the video I recorded right before this about Territory Lounge, <laughs> where I talked about the mushroom bisque, which was always a famous dish at Artist Point back when it was a signature dining location. It's still the same soup and it's still really, really good. And it comes in an adorable little cauldron here at Storybook Dining. Also on your appetizers, you got some braised pork shank, but the appetizer may change out a little bit. Again, this is a fancy schmancy, expensive restaurant, so they kind of keep the menu moving seasonally. Now, a couple of the DFB team's past favorite entrees here include the gnocchi dish, which is called a stroll through nature. It's a really weird name for the dish, but it's really, really good gnocchi. I think this is also a vegetarian dish. And the royal prime rib roast, that's really, really good prime rib. To get a better idea of what you can order, other menu options include the Brothers Grim Herb Chicken, Bashful's Sustainable Fish, and the Cottage beef stroganoff. And dessert is one of the most exciting parts of the meal because of its over-the-top presentation. You'll get a selection of small desserts like the poison apple, miner's treasure, fairy tale gooseberry tart, and hunter's gift. These desserts are a grand finale. You'll end the night munching on an adorable little dopey hat, chocolate rocks, and truffles that come from a box filled with smoke and has a heart on it. It's where the huntsman was supposed to put Snow White's heart when he killed her and bring it back to the evil queen, but he didn't kill her. He just filled it with a bunch of chocolate hearts and caramel corn. Now that is a winning story. And how about those wickedly refreshing cocktails? They play a role in this story too. So if you're looking for something sweet and fruity, the Smoking Mirror cocktail is made with Johnny Walker Black, wild berry, lime, and rosemary smoke. Yep, you heard right, rosemary smoke. When you order this beverage, it'll come to your table. When you order this beverage, it'll come to your table in a separate pitcher. Your glass is served to you upside down, smoke filled, and atop a tree trunk, of course. When it's flipped over, your server will pour the cocktail in the glass for a sweet and smoky show. And yes, you can actually taste that rosemary smoke in your your drink. Kiddos have fun drink options to choose from too, like the non-alcoholic in the clouds beverage, which is basically blue Powerade poured on top of blue cotton candy. But if your kid loves pouring a blue tongue, they will get a kick out of this. Now, hate to bring in the downsides of this meal because we're having such a good time ooing and aahing, but the portions are kind of small for the price you're paying, particularly when it comes to those appetizers and desserts. Yes, you're getting three different apps, but they're not super significant for that very high price you're paying. Now, the entrees are good size, but again, appetizers, desserts, you're not really getting you know, that soup is really good. I would like more of it. Okay, so speaking of price, what's the damage here? Are we gonna have to grab a shift at the diamond mine after this meal's all said and done? Let's cut to the chase. Adults can expect to pay around $60 per person and $40 per child. So to put it in perspective, a meal for two adults and two kiddos is gonna cost you around 200 bucks, not including tip. But here's the thing, this price is definitely comparable to other character meals you'll find in Disney World. The portion sizes are where things differ. Value is a big deal at Disney, and although the enchanted setting and rare character interaction are fabulous, the portion to price ratio doesn't completely deliver at this location. The majority of character meals throughout the parks and resorts are all you can eat, whether it be a buffet or family style. There's no limit to the amount of food you and your group can consume during your meal, which makes the 50 plus price tag a bit more warranted. For a situation like this, however, where you're paying a similar price for a fixed and smaller amount of food might mean the cost doesn't feel as justified. Now, don't get me wrong. The food at Storybook Dining is great, adorable, and satisfyingly filling. And if you want more of a particular item, you can mostly request 
just another helping of a certain appetizer or dessert. It may vary meal to meal and cast member to cast member, but in the past we have been able to request more of those tiny soup cauldrons, so it's always worth asking if there is something you'd like more of. But if we're looking at it from a budgeting and value perspective, which we often do here at DFB because we know how important saving money is for all of us, the food offerings might not measure up when there are unspoken limitations for how much of a certain item you can request more of. For example, you can expect to pay 55 bucks per adult for those all-you-can-eat character meals at popular places like Chef Mickey's, at Disney's Contemporary Resort, and Garden Grill at Epcot, where you can get as much as you'd like of any appetizers, entrees, and desserts. However, you usually can't request more food at prefix character meals like Topolino's Terrace and Cinderella's Royal Table, meaning you're getting less food while still paying a similar price as you would at an all-you-care-to-enjoy character dining experience. And that's kind of more where Artist Point resides. You might be able to ask for extra apps or desserts, but it's not a guarantee, and it's definitely not an all-you-care-to-eat situation. That being said, getting to see the characters offered at Artist Point is less common than dining with Mickey and Minnie, which is what you're going to find at most character dining spots. So if you're comfortable with paying the elevated price for a unique character experience, that might make it more worthwhile. The price at Storybook Dining at Artist Point is, however, also comparable to the price for a meal at Cinderella's Royal Table in Magic Kingdom, which is another uber popular character meal that takes place inside Cinderella Castle. And much like Storybook Dining, you've got a prefix menu here, but no all-you-can-eat options. As much as I love Cinderella, and I'm glad she's the star of a meet-and-greet dining experience at her own castle, I'd have to say the quality of the food is much better over at Storybook Dining with Snow White. So I guess the moral of this story, this micro story, is that if you got to choose between Cinderella's Royal Table and Storybook Dining, I would absolutely choose Storybook Dining. Just saying. Not to mention Storybook Dining is operating with full character meet and greets, whereas Cinderella's Royal Table is still doing the whole modified character experience thing. Back in 2020, character restaurants took a major hit, and though many of them have returned to their original meet and greet format, lots are still running as shells of their former selves. Instead of Cinderella's Royal Table giving you the chance to meet lots of princesses all in one go, you can only meet Cindy herself for a brief moment before your meal begins. She won't walk around and greet you at your table like Snow White and the Dwarfs do over at Storybook Dining. Quick general advice for all you Disney diners, it's important to check out the Disney World website before making advanced dining reservations for character meals to see if full meet and greet experiences have returned or if a restaurant is still missing its characters or running a modified experience. All right, so is it worth it? Before we say, and they all lived happily ever after, let's decide if it makes sense for you to go to this restaurant. The answer is yes, if you want to pay for good food instead of bad food. I'm never gonna downplay the importance of good food in Disney World, and the food here is good, maybe even great. From the appetizers, entrees, and desserts, the food not only tastes great, but tells a story along the way, and I'm a sucker for a tree dish holder in the middle of my table. Also, it might be right for you if you love an immersive dining atmosphere. From the moment you step into Wilderness Lodge, you're already part of the storybook dining rustic setting, and it keeps getting better once you're actually seated in the main dining room. Those winding trees, the mood lighting, the meal presentations, all of it comes together for an evening of enchanted, immersive fun, even for people like me who do Disney all the time. And it might be right for you if you want a rare character dining experience. The Snow White characters at Storybook Dining don't appear at any other restaurant on property, at least not currently. So when you make a reservation here, you're guaranteed to meet a unique cast of characters. This character dining experience is also pretty tame for the most part. Over at Chef Mickey's, you might have to partake in napkin twirling or watch a conga line snake around the room, but the vibe at Storybook Dining is a lot more chill. Not saying that's a positive or negative aspect toward other character restaurants that are a bit more rambunctious, but the calm vibes here might be more appealing to adults who aren't looking forward to singing and dancing their way throughout a big meal. Now, the folks who might not want to dine here, it might not be worth it for you if you're not big into the character dining scene, obviously. Though the ambiance and food is nice and magical, the big draw of this restaurant is the Snow White cast. So if you tend to feel uncomfortable during character dining experiences, it may not be the best choice for you. Or maybe your kids are going to miss seeing Mickey and the gang. But where's Mickey Mouse? There's a reason Mickey Mouse is the star of several character dining experiences. He's kind of a big deal. So if you're worried that your kids are going to be let down by the missing Mickey Mouse presence here, you may be better off booking a reservation at another character dining option like Tusker House and Animal Kingdom, Garden Grill and Epcot, or Topolino's Terrace at Disney's Riviera Resort. You may also want to consider how scary the evil queen could be for little kiddos. She's not going to do anything malicious during your meal or anything, and she won't be wandering the restaurant, but her presence might still be intimidating for tiny tykes who don't want to dine next to a villain, especially one who's well known for poisoning food. Now, this might not be the best place for you if you want to make sure you're getting the most bang for your buck. If getting a good value for money is a priority, then you may want to invest in a different restaurant. There are plenty of places where you can actually pay a little bit less than they're currently charging at Artist Point for an endless, bottomless, limitless, however you want to call it, meal. If you're committed to stuffing your face with all the food 
food you can get for 50 bucks or less, you can hit up places like Cape May Cafe at Disney's Beach Club, Liberty Tree Tavern at Magic Kingdom, Boma at Disney's Animal Kingdom Lodge, Trails End at Fort Wilderness, all great restaurants and all all you can eat. We talked about a lot of different all you can eat restaurants in the 2022 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining. So if you want to learn about more of them before your big trip, head to dfbstore.com, type in the code YouTube to save money on your digital download. So there we've got it. There are a lot of really great things about having an enchanting dinner at Storybook Dining at Artist Point with Snow White. Seriously, that name is really long. And if you're staying in the Wilderness Lodge or another Magic Kingdom area hotel, consider popping on over to try out a character meal you probably haven't experienced before. Snow White fans will especially appreciate the commitment to theming that can be seen all throughout the restaurant. And hey, who wouldn't want to eat soup out of a tiny cauldron while laughing with Dobie, right? Right. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. Please drop your storybook dining experiences in the comments. As always, it really helps other viewers to see your experiences too. And as always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.